This is how Mother Nature intended it. All material that falls from plants is reused by other plants, is reused by animals. That's part of how Mother Nature works. Lad Smith is an expert on organic yard care and landscaping. He believes lawns are just one of the alternatives that people should consider for their yards. Out of all the plants that we grow in our landscapes, turf is the most highly intensive on maintenance. You have to use lots of products to keep it green, lots of products to keep it weed free, lots of products to keep insects or diseases out of it because it's not really a sustainable environment just having a monoculture of grass plants in one spot. Uh, Mother Nature works that she has communities of plants growing together and that's how if you look out in nature it all is. There's not just one plant species growing by itself. So it takes a lot of effort to try to keep lawn a, a looking a, a particular way. Um, and people's views are changing on it now. I really like how this bed's set up. Uh, great little example of what to do in a small area. Got a lot of outstanding plant choices in here. A lot of plants, Mediterranean type plants, the rosemary, the sages, the woolly thymes. Plants that once they're established become drought tolerant, um, need no fertilization, take care of themselves, good little plants. And once they're put all together like this, it's really nice planting of textures, scents, the rosemary, the sages, just be able to take that. The ornamental grasses, beautiful little look to add some nice feathery touches to it. And there's weeds in this bed, but you really can't see the weeds because of all the other textures going on. There's a dandelion over here, a little clover over there, some weed grasses, but yet as a whole, you can't tell that those weeds are there because then it becomes a, a, a moot point. We're not having to worry about killing all those organisms out there because they're bothering us. They become part of the landscape. Um, but again, to be able to do a nice little intensive planting, leaving the flower heads on the, 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 the flowers for winter time becomes us food sources for birds, food sources for all the little mammals, protection for all the uh, organisms for winter time for birds and such. Leaving it like this, let it go through. Most of this stuff will keep its look through the winter time and give us a nice natural look and then springtime burst out with color again. Smith explains why natural landscaping minimizes the impact of yard care on our resources in multiple ways. We're impacting everyone's lives by just trying to keep our lawns green. With a natural landscape, good soils, correct plants, watering to get established and then minimal watering after that, good use of mulches means that you're not having to use fertilizers. And if you do, put down an organic one. There are no insect or disease problems that warrant having to use pesticides. Completely take out those. And if people just chop and drop or they take their clippings, chop it right back in the landscape or compost it at their homes, absolutely no impact on our solid waste system by our landscapes. So by doing a natural landscape, we are minimizing the impact on all the other people in our community, plus minimizing the impact of the toxins and such to the environment. It's a win-win for everybody. Natural landscaping has the additional benefit of simpler and less expensive maintenance over time. When you think of all the time you have to spend on your lawn, year after year after year, no matter what, a natural landscape over time becomes less maintenance because the plants thicken in, the ground covers thicken up, they become natural weed barriers in themselves. By leaving plants to go through fall time and just kind of having them natural, in springtime most of those plants decompose, then you have to come and do a little cleanup. It's less maintenance than doing huge fall cleanups and such. We recommend in a natural landscape, let all the leaves lay where they're on the ground. As a matter of fact, people, if they have leaves on their lawns, blow them or kick them off because they'll kill the lawn. Put them off into your beds and have a nice thick layer of a mulch, a natural mulch that you didn't have to import in, in order to give you that weed barrier for winter time. Come back in springtime, it's composted down or decomposed down to a thin layer. You can till it all up if you want to or just leave it and put some mulch on top of it. Absolutely no leaf cleanup in fall time. Um, so natural landscapes, if they're allowed to do their things over time and, and correctly, become less and less maintenance where you're just out enjoying it instead of out having to maintain it. In a different setting, Smith shows how much can be achieved without artificial fertilizers or pesticides using exclusively organic techniques. One of the most important parts of a natural landscape is having healthy soil. Without having good soil that you're planting into, then you'll never have happy plants on top of it. So. The number one requirement of any new landscape is just use good, healthy, organic soils so that the plants will be top-notch once they're started growing in it. Where lawn is desired and the setting is appropriate, natural cultivation is best. 
This is a really nice example of a natural lawn. This is probably comparable to any artificially maintained lawn where they're having use, using heavy fertilizers and pesticides to try to get this kind of a look out of their turf. But you see where they've grown it a little bit taller, it gives us a stronger stand of grass, more leaf blade to photosynthesize, healthier. The grass when it's grown at a little bit taller also acts as a living mulch so you don't have the weed encroachment coming in here. It also shades out the the soil so that we don't get the evaporation like we would if the lawn was cut down to a quarter inch or an inch. But you can just see how healthy and rich the lawn looks. So not only do they have a beautiful lawn out here, not only do they have a lawn that takes less care, but they also have a nice environment for their family and their pets to be out here without having to have any health concerns. Smith reminds us that lawn is not appropriate for every location. We find around here in the Puget Sound again a lot of lawns that are on slopes. A lot of lawns that um, uh, are in soggy areas, you know, which their lawns are not going to grow that well that way. Shady areas around here, we have big trees and such that if you want to keep that kind of an environment going, uh, turf grass struggles in those environments. So those are almost perfect environments for other type of gardens that once they're established and successful, they no longer need much care, you know. They don't need the water, they don't need the fertilizers. They are just taking care of themselves and adding beauty and life to the landscape. So I bet you most people, if they looked at their lawns, they would probably see areas that lawn is not doing well, other plant material will thrive in that area. Here's my favorite part of the garden. Just taking a look at this beautiful, lush soil, looking at the, the richness of it, how deep that is, the color of it, the smell of it, how it crumbles. You can see that's a, a nice texture, nice composite, how, this, how the soil's made up with good organic matter. Also, having the leaves stay on the ground, allowing them to rot away naturally, adding to the organic matter of the soils. Plus, just leaving them for wintertime protects the soils from the winter rains so they'll be ready to go for summertime. Ultimately, natural landscapes enrich the quality of the environment around our homes. By having a natural landscape and let it develop naturally and let it um, uh, die back naturally, we're forming food sources for these animals, we're forming uh, shelters for these animals, we're protecting the soil in wintertime for organisms. Actually, part of what this is all about too is that it's just not us in a sterile atmosphere. It's like all the other organisms, all the other things that are part of that that just bring life to it. Natural landscapes will allow all that to come back into our environments. Remember the main points of natural landscaping. Good soil is the solution to most landscape problems and is necessary for any successful landscape. Use the right plant in the right place. Make sure trees will fit the areas when they are mature. Use natural lawn care practices when growing turf. Mow with a mulch mower. Leave the lawn a little tall. Fertilize with organic or slow-release fertilizers. Water wisely and think twice before using any pesticides. Use plenty of mulch. Mulch adds rich organic matter to the soil and it protects soil surface from hard winter rains and the hot summer sun. Be kind to all the garden creatures. They're essential to recycling nutrients and the natural functioning of your yard. For more information, call the Natural Lawn and Garden Hotline at 206-633-0224 or go to Seattle Tilth's website at www.seattletilth.org.